Can somebody tell me why Anne Hathaway looks so bad? Hey guys, welcome to Flirt. My name's Aaron Nays. Find me on Twitter at AKNaser. I want to talk about uh, this for just a second. Anne Hathaway is awesome and she doesn't deserve whatever's going on in the cover of Vogue. Um, she looks a little bit ill for some reason. I think it's the retouching. Um, I think what they did is they didn't put a whole lot of color in the shadows. They desaturated her face and desaturated her shadows as well, which makes her kind of look like ghostly and pale. She has light skin anyway, but I think they've just gone a little bit too much. Um, and it almost looks like a little bit kind of blotchy in some places. Have you guys seen this cover either in person, you know, like in a newsstand or at your house? If you have, take a look at it and kind of try to figure out what they did. Um, it, it's just a little bit off and I can't figure it out exactly. So uh, let's get that discussion going on, figuring out what's going on here and then make sure not to do that in your own photos. So <laughs> we're learning from the pros. Guys, today is contest day. Every Monday we have a contest and I want to give a big shout out to the contest winners last week's environmental portrait. Congratulations to Cozy, Daphne, and Fabio. Each of you guys won a Flurn Pro tutorial and we're gonna be editing your images here on Flurn. We're also announcing a new contest today, so be sure to stick around for that. You guys could be the winners as well. So let's go ahead and get into this contest, or this episode contest, right. Um, we're doing a lot with black level today and I wanna talk about bringing color into your black levels and what kind of a difference they can make with your images. So we're actually going to work with three images today. Um, these are the contest winners. This is Daphne's image, which looks awesome. I love this image. Uh, it's a really great silhouette, and all, all these little details here are, um, they just really make the image great. So what I wanted to do, we're just going to make a curves adjustment layer. There we go. And here in our curves adjustment layer, we can see our light levels are over here on the top right and our black levels here on the bottom left. Now, I can take this black level and kind of bring it up and that's just going to add a little bit more detail there into the shadows. Now if I bring this to the right, that's going to make everything to the right of that black. Um, I would stay away from doing that. Usually it just compresses too much of your photo. Um, unless you don't have any exposure there, like if your exposure is overexposed, you can use that to correctly expose. Here with the lights, we're going to do the same. This will bring your lights down and this will make more of your area light. So again, I would well, stay away from your lights for the most part. <laughs> but here's what we can talk about today. Um, what we're going to do is bring our black point up, but you're going to see the problem that happens. It kind of just grays out the image. And the reason is because there's, there's not a whole lot of color information in black. I mean, it's pretty much grayscale. So lightening that up is just going to make it look like a dark gray. And what we find a lot of the time is that we like images tend to gray out on us, but they don't have to. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how to fix that. So instead of grabbing your RGB channel and just clicking and dragging that up, what you want to do is grab each of your indiv individual color channels and work with those. So I'm going to grab my red channel, click here and drag this up. And you're going to see it's going to put a little bit more red into my shadows. Now we're going to do the same thing with our green channel and it's going to put more green into our shadows. If I keep going, it'll put quite a bit. So, you know, be a little bit, um, cautious with that because you can really you know change quite a bit of the photo and with your blues it's going to put even more blues into your image so if you keep your greens high and your reds high and your blues low it'll kind of give the image uh, the idea that there's a little bit of yellow so blue and yellow are opposite and if the blue level is lower than everything else it's going to come across as a little bit yellow so I'm actually okay with that now we can see in this image we did darken sorry brighten up the shadows. So we have quite a bit more detail there in the shadows, but we also have color. It didn't go completely to grayscale. And in this image with like that haze, I think it works actually very well um, to kind of complete the overall feel of the image. So let's just do that in contrast to what we, um, before today's episode, what you might've done making that black point a little bit lighter. So you can see that just kind of like turns it into gray. So we have this as opposed to that, um, which is a huge, huge deal. Now, a lot of people, when they want to make something brighter, they'll just click here in the middle and kind of drag that up. Well, the problem is your black level and your white level stay the same, and you wind up just getting something that doesn't look nearly how you want it to. Plus, in this image, we're losing all that nice detail in the sky. So, using your dark levels and dragging those color channels up individually will really get you a lot of control over your image. We're going to do the same thing with this other image here, and uh, we're going to use it to kind of add another color into the image. I'm going to use it because I want to add a little bit of red here into the shadows of, um, of this image, which is a very, very cool image. 
Let's grab our curves adjustment layer again. And you can see going to the red channel, we're going to click and drag that up just to put a little bit more reds into our shadows. We're going to grab our green channel and I'm going to bring that up as well. There we go. And that's going to kind of even that out. And now our blue channel, we can drag this up a little bit higher if we want to. If we drag it up higher, it's going to get, you know, that really nice cool tone there in our shadows. If we go a little bit lower, it's going to get a little bit more yellow in our shadows. I kind of like that cool. Let's go to our red channel and drag even a little bit more reds into our shadows. I think this image can take quite a bit. There we go. And as we can see, we can bring up our green channel. Now, what you're going to run into is if you bring up red, green, and blue all to the same level, it's the same thing as bringing up your RGB. So it's, <laughs> it's just going to read as grayscale if you do that. So make sure they're at different levels and that's where these different colors come into your image. So here what we can see is by bringing up those different levels to different places, let's just go ahead and close that out. We've added that red into our shadows, which looks really cool, kind of gives us that split tone on the image and uh, really complements the blue quite well. Um, if you want to knock that back a little bit, let's say we have a little bit too much red, just double click on there, go to your red, click and drag that down a little bit, and uh, there we go. Maybe it's still a little bit better now. And you can always adjust your opacity and things like that as well if you want to. All right, here on our last image, we're going to use the same technique to separate out our subject from the background. Now, a lot of the time, when you have a subject in the background, um, whether it's a composite or not, if you want your subject to kind of like stick out a little bit more, you can take the black levels of your background and kind of bring those up a little bit, and it's going to help your subject stand out. So I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. We're going to grab our red channel, drag it up to right about there. You can see it's putting some reds there in the backdrop. Let's put a little bit of green in there and let's do a little bit of blue as well. There we go. I think I want a little bit more red just to kind of like give it a little bit of color. So we're adding that color into the background, which I think totally works in this case. Now what I'm going to do with this is um, something we haven't done with the others. I'm actually going to layer mask this out over top of our subject. So I don't want my subject necessarily to get, you know, lighter and bring all the red into his skin. Um, I'd like the shadows on him to continue to be dark. And that's going to make him a little bit more contrasty than the background. There we go. And that should make him stand off the background just a little bit more. So instead of looking like, you know, the background and him are just on one plane, he's going to kind of come forward and the background is going to stay in the back and um, that's another great use of this technique so you can see really pretty simple all we're doing is raising those individual color channels of our black levels but you can see what a difference it makes especially over just grabbing rgb and especially uh, the using i said especially like eight times so there we go i like this technique i think it's great show me what you guys can do with it leave a comment in a box below and um, show me what you can do we have a contest today Every week we have a contest. This week's contest theme is, I don't know what it is, composite. All right, show us your best composite image. This means taking two or more images and putting them together into the same one. It doesn't have to be people. It could be putting a fork into a road, whatever you want to do. I don't know. I'm just trying to invent some things right now. But compositing and uh, you can do many, many different things with the composites. You can have a lot of things together. You can have two images composited that were maybe from the same scene. A lot of people do this with like self portraits. They'll have a camera in the same place and then they'll take pictures of themselves in a few different locations and then composite those lo locations together, composite the images together, and then they'll have multiple versions of themselves. So those are really cool. They're not that hard to do and uh, they totally count for this week's composite theme. So guys, Leave your images in a comment down below and you could be the one having your image edited on Flurn and you could win a Flurn Pro out of the deal too. Thanks so much for watching Flurn guys. I'll see you later. Bye everyone. Here we go. Come here. This is Ben down over here. This is Jamie, the one who walked in in the middle of our episode. Hello, Thanks. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Let's talk, let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. <laughs>